would just say everything that you feel taboo about or you feel embarrassed about, people have gone through and that you shouldn't feel embarrassed and you should start talking to people and make it aware. I think there's so many different topics that I keep trying to bring up that people feel ashamed to talk about, whether it's like, how much did you pay for your wedding versus did you go through IVF and what was that process? And like, so I think all these things that we try to keep quiet are actually hurting like our generation. I think these are things that we should start talking about that our parents never talked about. Hey everyone, welcome to one more episode of PJ Podcast. I'm super excited about this episode. Today I have Arthi here. She was on Netflix Indian Matchmaking. Um, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Pretty cool episodes. Um, the ending was amazing. Yeah. Surprise ending. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, Arthi, for being here. Of course. Of course. Thank you for having me. Yes. Yeah, so as you guys know, this is about like taboo topics and life experiences. And Arthi has been having issues with birth control. And I think it's something that it's not talked about at all. So tell me more about your birth control story. I feel like, and this is something where even when I'm Googling, it, I feel like I'm not even getting the right answers or realizing that people have the same stories. But then when I talk to people individually, I've noticed that, yeah, they've had a lot of these issues. I went on birth control when I was about 15. I had a lot of reasons for going on it. Um, I used to get like ovarian cysts. I would have painful periods. I would have acne. And so I went on birth control from... 15. So that's what 17 years I've been on birth control. It's insane. And I switched from like the low dose, like the daily pills, because I would forget to take them <laughs> to the ring. And when I switched to the ring in my early 20s, I never looked back. I loved it. I was so happy with it. And I would get like a period every two months, which was to me phenomenal. I loved Yes. I was happy with every one of the side effects from it. It was great. It never had it never had an issue with it. I got off of it at the very end of last year. So the reason that we got off of it was kind of twofold. Um, one, um, you know, we're looking into maybe freezing my eggs and going that route later in this year. Um, and also, you know, when when you think you get into a relationship, sometimes you just want to start weaning off of that stuff. It takes a while, right? That's what I've heard. That's what my doctor told me. So I was okay doing that. So I came off of it end of last year and it is what, July, August. Mm -hmm. So it's eight months, maybe even a little bit longer. And I still don't feel regulated. And I don't think people talk about that. And there's a lot of things where when I started birth control, I had like acne, I had like all these things. And every single one of them has all of those si like uh, effects that I had before have come back. Wow. And I don't know um, any, I'm not a doctor. I know nothing about this. So I don't know why that's the case. I know like birth control, like hormones really suppress certain things. And, and um, I just, when I came off of it, like to come back to being in your 30s and now having to deal with acne is such a pain. And then I actually lost some weight coming off of birth control, which I was not mad about. That was fine. But then there's like the painful sides of it, like the painful periods and things like that. Now I get like a period like every 28 days yeah, or 30 days. That's annoying. That's annoying now too. <laughs> and like it doesn't, I, I've always had them where they last like a couple days and then they're gone and still like that, which is great. But like I feel super moody. When I first started getting off birth control, I used to like scream at my guy, um, which I just like, I think he was like, okay, whatever, it lasts a day or two and mm -hmm. he was fine with it. But like, that's not me. I'm not like that type of person. So for me to get so annoyed with him, yeah. I just couldn't even like be in the same room. And it was probably some over something stupid. Oh yeah, hundred percent. It was like it was like pick up your underwear off the floor or something, you know. Like it probably screwed. But like you know, and then I had these cravings where like I could be eating a Kit Kat because I'm like craving chocolate, and at the same moment I'm like, oh my god, chips. It's like at the like I had to have an exact same moment. So all these cravings that I just never used to really have. Yeah, started coming back. Yeah, which is insane. I know. And it's in your thirties, so this is something that you go through 
in your early 20s and your yeah. late teens. Yeah. And I get like, like now I get like acne under my chin and I'm like, oh, that's hormonal. I'll get it like sometimes on my back where like, you know, now I work out and I'm like scrubbing heavily. I'm trying like all these like different lasers and things like that because like I don't want the scarring from that. First of all, it's already embarrassing that you have acne. Second of all, it's like I don't need scarring like on my face or anything like that. Yeah. I've, we've worked so hard for so many years <laughs> to develop this like routine so like now I've changed all my skincare I've changed like everything and, like it's like everything that you had set is now being disrupted again it's going backwards right? yeah starting from square one yep see I don't believe in birth control to oh, be yeah. honest like I don't like it yeah and thankfully I'm regulated but I did have cysts Mm-hmm. And like the doctor, painful. It, they're painful. They're super painful. She kind of wanted me to start birth control, and I said no. Okay, I said I'm not doing it because of these side effects. Because yeah. no one talks about, yes, yeah, so it'll protect you and it'll regulate you. But look at the side effects you're going through. I know. I lost a lot of hair too. So I think it was like three months into after um, getting off birth control. And, like, I've always liked my hair, I've been happy with it. And then all of a sudden in the shower, like, you know, you lose a few. I was, like, losing it in clumps, and I was like, oh, my God, this feels like I have a disease or I have cancer or something, you know, like, and you start, you start wikipedia it, and then you realize, oh, it's actually from the birth control. When you regulate back, you start losing your hair. Now, that is probably the scariest part of it all. Like, I can deal with all the other side effects. Losing my hair was the scariest part, Um, and it truly doesn't last. It probably lasted five weeks, and then I was like, okay, I'm not seeing it, like, come like I don't see my hair all over the place anymore like Mm -hmm. or coming out in the shower I like stopped shampooing my hair so often when I was going through that yeah um and it's just it's just a lot that you deal with and I felt like I was the only one and but when I would talk to people they'd be like yeah when I got off birth control it felt like that too (laughs) but nobody talks about this and it it should be talked about because you felt alone you're like what the heck is this like is this normal but then it's not talked about and we should start talking like the women should be like hey this is what i've been through getting off what did the doctor say about it what like did you come up like with these questions to him and he was like oh it's normal yeah it was just like that was kind of the thing was that it takes they said six months to a year to regulate but they don't talk about what regulating means Mm -hmm. and like they don't talk about like any like sort of natural things that you could be taking to kind of help with your hormonal imbalances so like i have to start I like did research that there are like certain things like peppermint teas and like Mm -hmm. things like that. There are like natural herbs that like can help with the imbalances of this. But nobody like sits there and says, hey, like you're going to like start losing hair and it's because of that. Or you might have this side effect or you might have that. But I also what's the scariest part to me is that after being on birth control for 17 years, you also wonder, can you even have kids? Can you go through all of that? And then you have to come off of it in order to check all of that. Yeah. And it's like there are multiple times where people have asked me like things about this. And I just I, I honestly like break down. And I'm like, I wish I could go back to it. I really wish I could just go back on birth control, but it's not an option at this point. Especially if you want to have kids. And I don't want to redo this whole thing. So I'm yeah. just like, all right. Like, I think nobody, everybody's on birth control and they truly believe in it. And I believed in it heavily too. And then I get to this point where I never realized this was an issue. Yeah. And that's why I didn't believe in it. Because number one, having kids. Mm-hmm. It's, you, you can't be on it for too long. Yeah, 17 years. It's a long, long. It's a long time. <laughs> it might be too long. Yeah, but you weren't educated on that. No, but like it wasn't a thing that they talked about. Like you said, like when I was having all these like issues, my doctor was like, just start it. And I'm like, okay, cool. Sounds great. Like I thought it was a cool thing to do too. Like <laughs> yeah. I was 15. Like nobody else in my like, my friends had like birth control. I was like, I'm cool. <laughs> now that you're 30, it's like, oh shit. Yeah. It's not cool anymore. It's not cool anymore. <laughs> And then, like, you want to freeze your eggs. Like, that's another thing. Yeah, that's another emotional, hormonal imbalance that you go through. It's like your body feels like it got 
pregnant and you deal with all the emotions and like, so I had a friend that recently did it and I've been like asking her a thousand questions about it. And I like see how emotionally you go up and down and how you feel like really depressed after the retrieval too. Nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about the bloating that like really sits there for a long time either. Like all of these things that make you not feel like yourself. It takes weeks for you to even like feel somewhat normal again and like nobody talks about that but it's like you're tricking your body into dropping more eggs so it's like you're already adding so the injections are a ton of hormones back into your body that is you're probably going to go through all of these same things again which right. is yeah the hair loss thing i've heard and all of, yeah women go through a lot honestly <laughs> and it's expensive so when we talk about that it's so expensive to do these things my insurance doesn't pay for it how do i get my insurance to pay for this? yeah exactly it like it's not going to no and how old are you 32 listen i'm looking into freezing my eggs because i'm in the 30s already and yeah. if i don't find someone by 32 it's like even at that point i'm like listen i i found someone but like do I want to have kids right now and I know like logistically like I feel like we can have kids for a very long time but um I think by 35 they call it a geriatric pregnancy <laughs> and it's so scary yeah to think that. if I'm like I don't even see myself having kids in the next three years um by 35 maybe it's just smarter to freeze it earlier because then I don't want to have to go through that process twice where you barely got enough eggs because I think you need like what seven you need seven eggs for at least one round, Jesus. right? So I think many that's eggs you need. So, like, <laughs> I think like when you're in your twenties, you can pull out twenty to thirty eggs easily, and then it starts to go downhill. That when you get closer to like your mid to late thirties, you might pull out seven, and then only five are viable. Jeez. So it's it, scary. It's scary. It's like a whole process that people don't talk about. Right. And then I also heard like it's not a hundred percent set. No, you have to make you might have to go through multiple rounds. Or I know most people that do IVF end up with twins, triplets. And I'm like, oh, I just asked for one. I do say I'm not having twins or triplets. I want twins. <laughs> yeah, no, I think um, if it doesn't run in your family, I can't. <laughs> so I've never done this and I don't have like, I, I can't really talk about it. Um, right. But it's something that I'm looking into and doing my research. But like, I would love to see like, people on Instagram share their journey of IVF, share their journey of dealing with the hormonal balances and things like that. And honestly, one of the reasons why I haven't shared it before is because it's embarrassing. You shouldn't feel embarrassed though. You shouldn't feel ashamed. I know, but it is because I feel like nobody talks about it. It's like taboo. Welcome to my <laughs> podcast. But honestly, I think you should not, I'm not saying you should, you have yeah, to, but like, it would be great. I mean, we're doing it now. We're doing it now. <laughs> but yeah. So like even on your own, like Instagram, talk about it here and there. How cool would that be like to inspire that? Yeah. Topic? No, I already said like, if I'm going to do the IVF journey, I'm going to document it. Like yeah. that was something that I think people need to know about, especially like the hormonal imbalances, the bloating, the aspect of how many you can actually get that are viable. Like I mm -hmm. wanted to go through that whole process. Right. But even if getting out of the, the birth control as well, because people don't know how long it takes and how like your body goes through so much. Honestly, yeah, eight months. I did not expect that I would be sitting here in almost August still having this like conversation about how I'm dealing with all of these issues. I think we're finally getting to a point where it's like it's so much better than it was like when I first started. Mm -hmm. But I've had to change my whole routine. And you know, sometimes when you find skincare, it's not cheap. Change your routine. No. And you what have skincare to use a curiosity. <laughs> I like have been, yeah, I've been changing my routine. So like when I first used to have like mild acne, I did all the face reality stuff. So now yeah. I've kind of come back to that. I've also started like all the different products um, just to like make sure like my acne, especially like right when my period is about to hit, I'm going to see like all these like little things mm -hmm. pop up, which is so annoying. I know. Um, and you know, it's coming, um, and now, cause it's so regular, it's, it's even worse. I've gotten to the point where like I've switched to like a lot of like salicylic acid based products. Mm. 
Yeah. Um, and now creams and things that I use is I use water-based moisturizers and I use the sunscreens that are, uh, that they don't clog your pores. Yeah. Like, I think mineral based. Mm -hmm. I do peptides, niacinamides, like all of that for like my face skincare. Yeah. Like I'm like now like, okay, let's get further away from makeup and more towards skincare products. Yes. But in order to have like good skin, you have to like start off with the good face. Oh yeah, because and it gets expensive, like you said. It's, it's and it's like a trial and error. Yeah, like, if it doesn't work, you're like, what do I do with this? Exactly. I just wasted my money. Yeah. But I think women should start talking about this. Like this is just a topic that we go through. Like mm -hmm. it's a normal thing in mm -hmm. life, like getting our periods, birth control, freezing the eggs. Yeah, and like it's so weird that people are like have find periods taboo which i don't even understand in india like it's very taboo there's something i was reading recently that there was like some temple that won't allow women if they're on their period to enter oh no you can't enter at all yeah yeah i did not know that obviously i'm indian yeah and we have a temple at home and if i had my period like i can no go nowhere near the temple like during okay. like narati and diwali like if you have your period you cannot go to the ceremonies you cannot go near the gods or the saints do you know why though I asked my mom many times because I don't believe in that because it's part yeah. of nature. And she's like, well, it's like you're dirty. I'm like, what do you mean you're dirty? Like, it's it's our system. And she's cycling out, yeah. Yeah, and my grandma was huge on it. Like, I think one year she was with us during Narati and it was like the whole week, the holy week. And I had to stay upstairs and I cannot come downstairs until she finished her Why prayer. Why would you even tell them? Just lie. Because my mom's like, oh, because of the guilt and this. God for you. you know how these Indian people are? No, bro. <laughs> yeah, like, it's just then you feel that guilt. Like, oh, my God, I have my period. I'm, like, over here. Like, it, I think it's just, like, brainwashed in our minds at this point. And my grandma's like, do not touch me. Do not touch anything. I'm like, chill, lady. Like, it's my fucking period. Like, isn't this normal? <laughs> I feel like education about this stuff is huge. Like, I, I don't think that it's being taught and talked about enough. I mean, I could sit here and talk about how I truly, like, don't believe, like, any of what your family is saying. But, right. like, it's not about my beliefs. It's just that it should be education. Sure. And it should be a question of why. Why do you do it? Why? And then nobody really asks that. And nobody has an answer for that. It's just, it, I think it's just, like, made up. Yeah, by like some person. That's some where man. I, yes, it was, <laughs> and I and I get so pissed off. I get so yeah because angry. it's made up by a man, He's, and it's a rule about women, and yeah. that's a lot of really. I'm we're not going to. Other than that, like there was an Indian movie, a Bollywood movie about pads, and I think that's when it all started to come out because yeah. it's like. But. There's a really good organization that I ran into a few months ago that's like educating everyone and like villages in India about pads and periods. There was recently a 20 something year old guy who he murdered his 12 year old sister because she started bleeding and he thought that she was no longer a virgin. He had no idea that she had. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. And so education is probably the number one thing. And then, and then it's being able to be accessible to these things, right? Right. Because if you believe so heavily in doctors, but doctors don't understand what it is, that's a problem. And then tampons is like another thing. Oh like, my gosh. Oh my God. God, God, God forbid God we go into tampons. <laughs> you, you're not ever doing yeah, no, anymore. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think I started straight on tampons and it was like a very difficult process, but I, I was like never a fan of. See, I started with pads because of the mentality that I yeah. grew up with. And Very then Indian I'm, mentality. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, I do the tampons all day, every yeah. day because it's like a lifesaver. <laughs> right, right, right. See, and that's why I'm grateful for my mom not pushing like a lot of those traditional bases on me. She was never like that. And so she was always like, just like, I think one point, like I heard her talking to one of her friends and she was like, no, she hasn't started yet. I think it was like 13. I was like, yeah, I did like like six months ago. And she was like, what? <laughs> she didn't even know. <laughs> she didn't even know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like it was like also on me to feel like I couldn't tell her, even though like she never made it feel that way. I just feel like it's so taboo. Like nobody talks about it. Yeah. Thankfully, I had two older sisters. Mm. So that helped out a lot. Um, and I was we were really young. We were 10 years old. When we got it. So oh, wow. That's so, really young. Yeah, I was like in fifth, fifth grade. Oh, wow. Yeah. I think it was 13. <laughs> I was so. like, Jesus, why am I getting this so early? And then forget it. Then it went downhill from there. But we need to start talking about it more and more. Not being a taboo topic, but just a normal topic. Bringing it back to birth control, like, as much as, like, people hate on it, I used to love it. Yeah. And, like, and I still would mm -hmm. go back, but it's just going to ruin all my progress. But, like, I yeah. love that I 
got a period every two months, which is probably not healthy. But I no, it. I'm the opposite. I just wasn't a fan. <laughs> yeah, I know. It it really does. And um, one of my friends, when I was coming off of birth control, he's such a jerk. He goes, um, make sure you still like your, your guy because sometimes birth control messes with that. When you come off of it, you don't actually <laughs> like him anymore. And I was like, damn, like... I was scared. <laughs> I was like, really? really? Is that a thing? Um, so you but, still like your guy? Yeah, yeah. We still like I, I never knew that birth control, like, hormonally messes with you so much that you don't even feel like yourself sometimes when it comes to, like, who you choose. I never knew that was a thing. Never knew that was a thing. I never knew that either. Actually, he, and he wasn't wrong. That is the thing. Something I learned because I had no idea. Yeah, it's, like, something about how, like, I don't know the, the full process, but something about how... When your hormones are imbalanced, you think you're like in love with someone, but you're not. I'm going to look into this because I'm curious. <laughs> By the way, we're not doctors or anything. So no. yeah, we have consult. no idea. Yeah, <laughs> Consult your doctor before doing anything. <laughs> before falling in love. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I would just say everything that you feel taboo about or you feel embarrassed about, people have gone through and that you shouldn't feel embarrassed and you should start talking to people and make it aware. I think there's so many different topics that I keep trying to bring up that people feel ashamed to talk about, whether it's like, how much did you pay for your wedding versus did you go through IVF and what was that process and like so I think all these things that we try to keep quiet are actually hurting like our generation I think these are things that we should start talking about that our parents never talked about I agree 100 percent. thank you so much Arthi for being a guest don't forget watch any matchmaking <laughs> on Netflix season three and until the next one bye guys